Michael, you look like you're over there thinking and pondering. <laughs> Deep thought. <laughs> well, no, well, so I, 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 I felt this way when LSU and South Carolina got into it in the SEC tournament. I'm so glad you went there. I was, but I was just like, what's the big deal? Like, honestly, that was not a, I mean, it was a great game. It's a great rivalry. The juxtaposition between how Dawn Staley and Kim Mulkey uh, took accountability or did not take accountability for it. I get the talking points and the conversation around that part, but the incident itself was not a fight and it was not a melee. Right. Was, and it was, I, I, it, it my, was nothing. I'm sorry. I right. don't mean to interrupt you, but like I, yeah, no, I was going to go, I was going to go right. here. But this, yeah. exactly, I'm just glad you pointed out the melee because the the descriptions, you know, and this is, this is, you know, kind of the point place where I was gonna go next with this is like the microaggressions we're seeing in the media, but like the descriptions that came after later for Camila Cardozo and, 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 and headlines that said things like, it's an embarrassment or that it like ruined, you know, the entire, you know, um, game and the tournament. It's like, we like that. Like now everyone is anticipating and hoping right. that LSU and South Carolina right. make it to the final four. So what, like, why is this a bad thing? Like it was not this crazy. It, was, no, it, it, it was wasn't not. malice in the palace. It was competition. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. It was competition. It was heated competition. It was high stakes. So when that happened, I felt like a, that's not a fight. B, well, what do we expect? It's basketball. These are world-class athletes playing basketball. Aren't we past looking at women's basketball players as though they're supposed to, as though they're playing tennis, as though no, they're supposed to be we're not past quote unquote. It. Well, no, no. <laughs> well, well, no, well, well, no, we're not because we live in a patriarchal society. We live in a racist exactly. society and a patriarchal society. So there's always going to be racial undertones and microaggressions when it comes to commentary, conversation, and criticism. And it's always going to be patriarchal and in some cases misogynistic undertones when it comes to the commentary, uh, criticism, and conversations around sports and just society in general. So we're not past it, but that was how I processed it. I was like, well, what's the big deal? Like, they just got into it because they're basketball players playing basketball. Are we, why are we still tripping because they're ladies? So I, I agree with, with your original premise, Natalie, and yours as well, Michael. So now this, this part, the cussing part. The only thing I would say, though, is, and again, I'm sure it's being delivered differently and maybe coming from different places, but, and, and I'm gonna see if I can say this right, like, I don't think, I'm gonna just use Draymond Green. Sorry, he's kind of like the poster child for petulance. I'm gonna just use Draymond Green. No problem. Draymond Green gets criticized for how he acts towards officials. Draymond Green gets criticized for how he, how, how he goes at other players or, 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 or what he says. So like a hallmark of the men's game is aggression, is competitive fire, is in some cases foul language, is taunting, is trash talking. But what also comes with that a lot of times is commentary about class and sportsmanship. So I don't know that I necessarily see a I don't know about gen, class. A gen, well, it may, maybe not the word. Cl I, maybe maybe not also, the word. Cl I've never heard. No, but wait, wait, I've never hold heard on, that wait, hold in on, men's game. Hold on. Wait, wait, yeah, you have. You, you have. The difference is, I guarantee you have. Whether it's class, whether it's sportsmanship, whether it's professionalism, whether it's maturity, whatever you want to call it. The difference is, it hits different when you're talking about women. That's where we all agree. When you're talking about women, it comes from a place. A, a, a place of well, this is how you're supposed to be acting because you're a mm -hmm. woman. When it's with men, it doesn't come from well, men shouldn't act that way. It's you know, should you carry yourself that way, independent of your gender? It's just, it's just the you can't you cannot separate this kind of commentary, which Natalie is calling out, from the larger context is the problem. That's why that's why I hit it, you hear it differently, Natalie. I'm not I'm not saying that and I'm not saying that people saying it aren't coming from a place of, you know, sexism or double standards. I'm saying that the same criticism and commentary does exist but for different reasons for sure. in the men's game. But the yes. other thing too that I think is a difference with the men's game is like you mentioned Draymond Green. You know, we yeah. know like there's other players, Dennis Rodman. There's certain kinds sure. of players where that kind of stuff happens. Like Chris Paul complains a lot to the refs. 
LeBron does right. too, but they're superstars, right. and so they're not called out and talked about in the same way. That's why I said I was surprised. Chris, Chris, but Chris Paul is one of the most hated people in the NBA because for of that sure, reason. for that's sure, for sure. But I'm yeah, talking great, about Dylan Brooks is a villain. Right, not but that, be celebrated for it. But, but Angel Reese, for example, as many critics as Angel Reese has, Natalie, you and I both know how many people ride ten toes down for Angel Reese. For sure. Of the way she yeah, but the but Caitlin Clark calling her, that's what I'm saying. Like, usually the stars, that's my point. Like, we don't mm. usually care about the fact that they're chirping with refs, you know? Like, you let some, like, you let a LeBron or a Chris Paul do it, and the description is different. That's my point. So when you Luka bring up, like. Luca gets called a cry, baby. Okay. Who does? I, who I, does? I, who, who gets called? Luca. And, 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 but, and this is, and this is not, but, this is not a what. Hold on, now. I just want to be clear. But hold on, Mike, one second. Point, I just want to be clear. Though. This is not a what aboutism. I'm not, I'm not, I'm no, not. No, I know you're not. You're I saying. know you're not. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm not, I think I'm that's not, a not, distinction. Yeah. That's my, that's and, my. But, but I also think, Michael, it represents, and I hate doing this. I hate resorting to this. I hate when people say, oh, this just goes to show how far the game has come. But kind of like, you know, like, this is, this is, this is basketball. And, and like we're talking about just basketball and we're passionate about basketball and to Natalie's point about the fight. All of this is good for the game, not the women's game. Yeah, the game of basketball. Yeah, at every like, level. Yeah, I'll tell you this. There, there will not be it's good. It, it's good for the game, uh, but maybe uh, bad for the bad for the society. <laughs> okay, good for the game, bad for our society, bad for the soul that we have bad for the soul. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? If I went to a game, if I'm still working for a newspaper, I go to a game and then I report back to the home office. Hey, I got a story. What's your story? Um, I, Chris Paul said the like, sorry, like, uh, oh, he cursed. Chris Paul cursed tonight. Hey, Draymond Green yeah. was cussing during the game. Put that in the headline. Yeah. Hey, LeBron James was cussing. And Patrick Beverly, Anthony Day, like you go on and on. It's not even a head. It's not a headline. It, Michael, guys, about. about go ahead. But it's not a headline. If I go to a game, I, I guarantee you, I, any game I go to, the next game I go to, I don't care if it's uh, the, the next Celtics game I go to, whoever they play, sure. bad team, great sure. team, there's gonna be a ton of cussing on the court. It, no, it, no and question. it's not going to be no and nobody's going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it on a brother from another. The Boston Globe's not going to have a headline on it. It's not going to be a bleacher yeah, I, report. It's not going to be I a think NBC that's a generalization. Sports. It's not. I think that's a generalization. It, there, there, there's a there's a Wait, lower gen- bar for me. Are you kidding there's me? a low. There's a no, I'm, no, there's a lower bar. I'm not trying to be contrarian. Trust me, but there's a lower bar for men for sure for sure. There's a lower bar when it comes to what's considered etiquette or behavior or proper or, or a proper way to do it. But there are plenty of situations where if a player loses his cool at a ref or at a fan or at another at an opponent or a teammate and uses certain language, it's a conversation. A, give me an Michael, example. Give me one com- example. Com- so if you're gonna put me what, on the spot, I'm gonna fail that test. I'm gonna fail. I'm gonna fail that test because it's so common. But I'm saying you're not gonna tell me that that we don't ever talk about men's behavior. It doesn't have the same the undertone, or, or, or even yeah, language, talk about the behavior. or even language, Michael. Like there are players that have been criticized for cursing and, and with an earshot of kids and 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 in the stands. It's even language has been a point of conversation. It just again the undertones are different. Maybe the motivation to Natalie's point is different. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the people saying it are saying it for different reasons. But I st- and again, I, I don't know how I got this deep on this on this on this branch here. I guess what I'm saying is I think I look at it as it, I'm fine with people criticizing women the same way in my in my recollection they have criticized men for their on court demeanor. My problem comes when it's coming from a patriarchal or misogynistic or sexist that. place as if women are supposed to act dainty like and polite and soft and docile be- playing basketball. That's the part where I we agree still with have the latter from if it's that and I think it's important. Yeah. To I agree point with the out. latter. I guess I'm disagreeing. I'm disagreeing with the former, with the former. and I'm yep. saying it is not the same. Way. You don't you don't you don't you don't think you don't it, think there's conversation the in the men's game around men uh, around men's behavior. Okay. Not, right. not around their language. I their think. behavior, yeah, but their language, no, never. Okay. Oh, the, oh, the language. Okay. Okay. Language, All right. You, you're talking specifically okay. about. Okay. All right. Yeah. You're talking about you. Okay. 
Sorry. You, you, so you at home, you had drilled down on that, not waving yes. goodbye. Not, yeah, okay, or not going at it with an no official. You're talking about profanity. Okay. Are I mean, we even right, talking? But that, if okay. a man does that, are we talking about it? Like, if a man waves goodbye, are them, we? So, some. Of, it depends on who it is. There, there are assholes in the NBA. For there sure. are assholes at all level of basketball. There are villains. It depends on who it is. Like if somebody, like, they, if Dylan Brooks but, does it, we we expect it. If, P- if Patrick Beverly does it, we expect it. And it's also not hey man, if, it's also not pearl clutching hating, though. If you ain't you ain't doing it right. It's, no, not, it's not pearl, pearl clutching, clutching either. It's not it's not it's not it's not pearl clutching. You're 100% correct on that. And, and you know, I just something you said that I think is really important to point out because you said like it comes from a place of patriarchy. Women are also perpetuators of patriarchy. And I just want people Big time. to understand that Sometimes because Sometimes the biggest <laughs> ones. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> you know, because some of the outrageous headlines you were seeing were from 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 women, you know, mm-hmm. and I last week I sort of teased like what's the media's responsibility and I don't want to necessarily take us down a rabbit hole or go deep into another conversation, but I've been I've been paying very close attention to I've been paying very close attention to how the media is covering, you know, things right now because I'm learning and you know Michael Holly, I'm going to ask you because I know Mike brought up the other day that you're a professor and you and you teach this stuff. But I'm observing and I'm watching and I feel like, you know, we're at an inflection point in women's basketball at the college and pro level and college is definitely leading the way. But I just see some things that don't sit right with me. And as someone who knows probably more history than me. I'm curious if there were some of these same similarities in the NBA, because the NBA is still a relatively young league. And I think that people forget, like sometimes, you know, when they criticize the women's game and and viewership and attendance, I'm like, the NBA was on tape delay and Magic and Bird had to save it. It didn't like just come out the gates and and, and was this this great thing. And so there's like so many issues around coverage in women's basketball. I've mentioned it before, um, the, the disproportionate coverage of the white players versus the black players. And thank you know, goodness, allies like Paige Beckers and Kelsey Plum, they've spoke up on behalf of this as you know, white woman basketball players. But there's also just, Mike, you brought it up, the stuff that happened after the LSU South Carolina game, how Dawn handled it, Dawn knew she had to go apologize. Like, it wasn't an option. Like, we credited her and said, mm. you know, wow, look at how she apologized. And, and I, you know, and then look at how Kim Mulkey handled it. It was like such a stark contrast. Kim Mulkey said, I wish she would have said that to Angel Reese. Like, if, if Dawn Staley would have said that, what would the commentary have been? And I didn't see articles calling out Kim Mulkey for being classless, right? We just, we just let it pass. And so I'm watching because after Camilla Cardozo got into that minor scuffle, it was a push, she was described by one, by one outlet, or I should say by one person, as a giant Brazilian woman from South Carolina. Dawn Staley mm. had to call it out and a, a, an apology was issued right away, right? Ooh. You had that, we saw the headlines that I mentioned after Melee. It's an embarrassment. And then again, you look at how Dawn Staley knew, she knew she had no choice of how she had to approach that. Even last year, after the Final Four, after they lost to Iowa, she took the time during that presser to talk about her team and how she doesn't like how they've been described on the record and off the record as monkeys, right? bullies and that they're not, you know, it's a bar fight, that they're not these things. And so everyone is kind of tapping into this. Everyone is looking at how to cover it. And I'm just wondering what is the approach, you know, with all the history we have now, and I know that you're not just gonna eradicate microaggressions and racism, but what is the responsible way to approach this? Because I get so riled up all the time and I'm just one voice and I'm not even a major voice. What is the responsible way to approach this? Yeah, that's a uh, that, that's a heavy one. That's a, that's a lot there to uh, try to navigate. I know tangle. we can't. I'll, no, but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, Mike and, uh, and and Natalie. Now you bring up the NBA, and I think there was a there was a point where they had to the league itself had to confront what the perceptions were, and what the media was putting out there and deal with it. So. 
Larry O'Brien, the predecessor to David Stern. David Stern comes in as he t uh, as he liked to say many times, same year as Michael Jordan. So it was David Stern, first year commissioner, Michael Jordan in '84, and so they already had Bird and Magic, but they still there was still a lot with that. There was a lot unspoken with Bird in Boston and Magic in L.A. White star, black star, who were great friends, but the country saw something completely different. Depending on where you were, this country was still dealing with some of the things we deal with today. And so there was a lot of commentary that was uninformed, that was very ignorant, coming from NBA fans and NBA reporters. And David Stern was trying to make the league more universal. So he was trying to promote the league and he was trying to deal with some of the st some of the stuff that he knew was happening in the league. So three years after that, three years after, you know, Dennis Rodman says his comments about Larry Bird after they lose a playoff series to Boston. Hey, if he was just another black player, we wouldn't be celebrating Larry Bird. So there's a lot of resentment still that kind of conversation. He had won three straight championships and Dennis Rodman says this stuff. Isaiah Thomas agrees with it. Like it, it was that kind of commentary of like, oh, he's just getting credit because he's a white player and the rest of us are being ignored. And I think they, the NBA really had to confront it. It had to deal with black players being called smart, which they weren't always celebrated now. Now you, you hear it. You hear players like LeBron being described as cerebral, Steph Curry, uh, at black coaches being celebrated, black general managers being celebrated for putting teams together. That stuff didn't always exist. It was very, uh, it, it was infrequent. And the media had to come along and follow what the league was putting down. The league saying, hey, look, we have these things in place. Why don't you write about it this way? Why don't you talk about it this way? Because you seem to be engaging in uh, your, you're, you're operating in tropes and stereotypes that really don't exist for our league. It really, it took probably 10 to, 10 to 12 years to get that stuff kind of rooted out yeah. of the NBA. And I think it's going to be a difficult process in women's basketball before we get to a point where we can have real conversations about yeah. their athleticism and their intelligence and their competitiveness without resorting to, ooh, women shouldn't act like that. Like, come on, what are we talking about? And that resentment well, Michael well talks said. about, Mike, that's happening right now. And I'm just wondering, do you think a media plays the part in building that resentment? Like, or should it just be like, whatever, ignore them and still, because that resentment that Dennis Rodman felt because of how they're talked about, that is happening right now, women's basketball. Like, like fans, people are feeling like that. Like that conversation is happening. And I'm sure some of the players don't do, even though no one's like said something on the record yet. Do the media play a part? Of course. Absolutely. And, and the media is such a broader term now because everybody's got a platform. I mean, like, you know, yeah. and, but and you ain't have, so, gate, you ain't have even social even media in 1987. Right. But, but or, or, just the, or just the or just the Internet, you know, or, but, or, or YouTube. But yeah. even just the gatekeepers of traditional media often failed um, when it came to the standards that were that we're aspiring to. Um, so there's a lot more media a lot less qualified media, therefore a lot less mm. ethical uh, and principled Ooh. media. Um, but I think as, as media evolves and, and conversations are not confined to just a certain elitist group, I think, like Michael said, in time, I'm hopeful that there'll be more people like yourself calling out um, these, these, these issues. Uh, both very well said on both the parts. Hey, thank you for watching brother from another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM channel 85.